Hey there, this is Wake Angel 2001 and I'm bringing to you another thing that I picked up at Toys R Us from the clearance rack. Originally retailing for $30, you can now get it for 5 if you can find them. It is the Bioshock Infinite Motorized Patriot, otherwise known as Creepy Robot George Washington. So, um, I didn't get it out of the packaging yet. It's one of those packagings that you really have to kind of cut open or risk destroying to get the figure out. But, um, you know, he's in there pretty good. You got, you can, he, he, the figure is clearly shown off. You get a good picture of what he looked like in the game, which is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, you got everything going on there. So, I'm going to cut open the box and get the figure out of there and do a proper review of it. I was about to start cutting it when I noticed that the back of the packaging is kind of cool too. Um, he has a little description and you get to see the figure in its full glory. Uh, they mentioned that it has an interchangeable head, which is nifty. And uh, even says a thing. The motorized Patriot is a testament to the technical prowess and power of Columbia. Originally constructed by Fink MFG, to serve as tour guides for the residents of Columbia, the motorized patriots now serve as a standing guard for the entire city. Fearless and unrelenting, without a shred of self-preservation, the patriots will track down and eliminate any opposition without remorse. You, will you be able to find the right combination to defeat these automated monstrosities? So, um, yeah, let, let's get them out of the box. So... I will endlessly criticize NECA for not making collector-friendly packaging, but I cannot fault them for the raw awesomeness of the toys that they actually make. First of all, this thing is huge. He is gigantic. Um, let's take um, that just for a bit of context on how tall this thing is. Here's Cherno Alpha, one of the taller Jaegers from the Pacific Rim line, and He's actually just a bit over, like like the top of Cherno Alpha's funny hat kind of meets up with the curl of the wig. So this guy's big. He's taller than eight inches. Um, let's uh let's take another figure that um and remember this is to scale with a six inch line. Like like if you have a six inch human figure, this is this would be proper scale to him. So like. Yeah, like there's the, the Doctor Who astronaut, like who would be the same height as any of the character pieces from from the Bioshock toy line. Big, 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 big is the name of the game with this thing. It's, it's a big guy. And oh wow, is this does this thing look fantastic? Now let's uh, get up there to his face. Now I know a lot of my watchers are actually fans of Five Nights at Freddy's. So the whole broken down, ramshackled, animatronic look should really be tickling you all in just the right way. Um, he has this cracked facade that's missing an eye. It's like he was built out of a soft plastic that hasn't received any maintenance. And as it aged, it dried and cracked. But the moving mechanical parts underneath still made it move. So, you know, this kind of tore. And his costume looks amazing. Um, he has, it, it basically looks like a, like, like, you know, the rebel uniform from when we fought in the, in the uh, Revolutionary War. Um, and you can see there's parts where the costume is torn, revealing the mechanical parts underneath. It's like they only put skin on his face because that's the only part that was supposed to show. Um, and everything else is going to be covered by clothing. And you can see in the pants which are also torn to show off his mechanical legs and then he has some really nice boots down there but that's not where the story ends and I'm kind of filming a Dutch angle here aren't I? Let's straighten that out uh, because the figure looks equally as impressive from behind so let's scroll back up from the feet where we can see the coattails including these real ropes that are hanging off his back that's kind of cool um, up to some mechanical greeble on his back. It's this is supposed to kind of like be like a steampunk uh, robot thing. So he's powered by cogs and gears, and well, he's moved by cogs and gears, and and this is a like this is like a leather belt 
thing, and it's actually kind of flexible. I mean, the wheels don't actually turn, but it looks like it would. See, like, you can see how he has, like, like that's his drivetrain, sort of. I wonder if that means it could... It, the best way to disable the robot while playing the game would be to run up from behind and sever this belt. Or would that only, like, make certain parts of it stop moving and it would still be a threat? I don't know. But, still, holy crap, this thing looks great. And look, you can even see, like, 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 just, just because, just because it's steampunk, you gotta have, like, wheels and gears just randomly around. Now let's talk about the articulation of this guy. Um... This is, because this figure has a lot of points of articulation. So uh, let's start with the head. It is ball jointed, with, and then it's mounted on a stem that's ball jointed in the torso. So he can like uh, do you like like what is love? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, but it can also means that he can look down. And considering how tall this guy is, I imagine he has to look down quite a bit at people. Ah. Uh, yeah, like, originally when he was a tour guide, he would have had to look down to address people on the field, like, And this is where the magic happens. Oop. Although that second stem is kind of easy to pop out of the chest. But we will... That, that's for a, a gimmick that I'll show you later. Uh, the arms at the shoulders are universal joints. I don't even know if this is... Let's hold on to the camera. Universal joints. Uh, this figure is so tall, it's hard to keep him in the shot. And of course, they can move like this. His elbows, the sleeve elbow bends nearly 90, and it's on a swivel. And the hand is ball jointed in there. On the torn arm, now you might think that this would get in the way of articulation, the sculpt. But no, this is all soft goods. This is all soft material. So it can... This is like kind of a free-floating sleeve that's not really attached to anything. You can completely take it off to make it look like it just slipped off while he was fighting. And then you can reveal the uh, ball-jointed hand, which they bothered to give skin to because the hands would have been exposed when this thing was factory fresh. And he has an elbow that actually bends a little bit better than the elbow on the other side. Now, um, it's hard It's hard for me to relay, but this kind of has a soft ratchet detent thing going on, which I think kind of helps because it makes it feel more mechanical. Plus, on a guy that's so huge, it simply makes him feel sturdier. Now, there is a waist joint under there, but I haven't been able to feel much range in it. I don't... I think it's just a waist cut. I don't think... I don't know if it's a... if, it, if there's any kind of ab crunch in there. I certainly don't feel it, and I'm not going to force it. He has ball jointed hips, but because of sculpt and everything, they don't really move much. Then again, this is just supposed to be like a big lumbering robot dude, so I don't really think you need to get him into many athletic poses. Simply taking a step should be enough, and he can pull that off. His knee joints, um, they sound creaky, but they do bend 90 degrees. The one with the pants in the way can be kind of awkward because you gotta like, um, bend that plastic. But then the one without the one without any soft goods in the way gets it can go actually a little bit beyond 90, which is cool. Um, I would recommend if you're going to pose and taking a step, try bending this knee because you know how soft goods can get. Like like his face is exactly what happens to soft goods if they're worked too hard and not properly stored. Um, the boots there's no movement here at the top of the boot, but the foot is designed to swivel left and right and it has some forward and back movement as well so yeah he has he has all the all the really good points of articulation for a well articulated figure and he's pretty stable you know th despite the fact that he's so tall and his feet actually aren't that big but yeah he's a pretty stable stander and would look good on display uh, if you want to have your creepy Obsolete. Ah, come on. You're creepy. <laughs> creepy. You see him? Tour guide. Thingy. Hey. 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 Enjoy looking at my watch for a couple seconds while I jam that head back on. Huh. Okay, let's, let's talk accessories. Okay, this guy comes with four major accessories. 
the first of which is probably the most impressive. It's this big old Gatling gun. Um, like it has this this part here that moves over the bullet chamber. I guess it'd be like the belt feeder. Um, and it, it has a really good paint job. Like it's supposed to look like greasy metal. Everything is gun metal-y. There's brass and silver parts. And it just looks really, really good. And it's huge. Like, I mean, look, it's... On my open hand, it goes from the heel of my hand almost to... up to, Past the... Almost to the third knuckle of my middle finger. That's a pretty, pretty big weapon. And... It's geared. When you turn this crank, the barrels turn, just like an actual minigun. Yeah. That's perfect. This is an awesome gun accessory. Um, although, you don't want to try, don't try to force turning, because like, when I try to turn the barrel, I can only get a, a little bit of rotation before I, I feel this gets stuck. So I think they really want you to turn the crank and not the gun barrel. So just be careful with that, because you might break it. His other accessories include a second head. Uh, this is the head that is what it looks like when all the soft goods come out. You can see that his forehead is a speaker. He's still missing the same eye. And um, you can see that the teeth behind the um, thing. And if you turn it to the side, you can see there's hinges and, and even little switches on the back of his head. Like, um, really, it looks really like technical greeble. Only thing is that it's just a head mounts on a stick. There's no second ball joint in there. So if you put this head on the robot, then he'll be able to look down and stuff and, and turn around, but he won't be able to do that what is love head bop thing. The last two accessories are these gigantic flags. They're, they're, they're big flags. They're really big flags. They're so big, I can't get them into the shot, even at maximum zoom out. Not that I really have room to hold them. Look. Look, see that the tips of them are just touching the the, the, t the desk. The top of them is actually up on that, that shelf on my desk. That's how big these flags are. They are big, big flags. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They still have 13 red stripes, being reminiscent of the American flag. But rather... But you know they these aren't these aren't the American flag. They're they're the flag from that place. And I don't really know because I never actually played the game because I don't have I don't have an Xbox. <laughs> okay, so let's see him actually wielding some of these accessories, eh? To start with, let's just um let's just swap out his head for all the pushing I did to get this thing back on the body. And you can see how the original head it has that um. You know, it has that other ball joint in there, which allows for the extra articulation. That's what the second head lacks, but it's okay. So you just kind of get the ball joint and just push it on. And there we go. That, that's a nice creepy looking head. It looks like, it looks kind of like a skull, but it, he still has like a nose made out of carved wood. So it's it's really kind of a creepy look. I mean, that's kind of what this whole thing is going for, right? He has to look like a creepy um, robot. Like something that was supposed... He's supposed to hit that scary part of the Uncanny Valley where something looks like it could be lifelike, but it just isn't. I mean, that's actually the scariest part of the Uncanny Valley. Something that looks human, but is just just inhuman enough that that you can tell and so this is actually a really creepy second head and I think it works even if it lacks that second ball joint the iron the iron the um the motorized patriot I almost call him the iron patriot <laughs> that's an Iron Man character he actually looks really cool wielding the Gatling gun um just like a regular Gatling gun he would he holds it about waist or, or hip level. Although, in this way, the, like, this was kind of terrifying because I was so afraid I was going to snap the crank 
you gotta make sure that when you're putting it in, you hold it here to push it into the hand. If you try to hold the Gatling gun and push it, you're gonna snap it, because that's a really thin piece of plastic. And well, now I can't really turn the, the crank to make the barrel rotate, because you, the articulation of the arm, like, like, it's really stiff, and it's hard to, like, get it to do the mechanical motion to turn the crank. So, I mean, it's really cool that they geared it that way, but, I don't know, I think they over-engineered. They could have done just as well with having this be an ordinary swivel, and then having the crank, like, not rotate, or if it rotated, like, not have it geared to the barrel so that we could still spin the barrel, even if... I don't know, I mean, it, this is supposed to be a toy for collectors and not for children, but I just kind of wish that it did that. Okay, so let's not interrupt the camera um, broadcast again. And uh, I would like to direct you to the backpack, where you see that there are little thingies. Those are where the flags go. See? They just slide right in there. They don't really peg tightly, they just rest in there. And uh, you can put one flag in each side. Like that. And then you zoom out because you look kind of crazy, you zoom so close in and kind of look, kind of has like an effect of wings. But we rotate this guy around and realize that um, that this thing kind of doesn't fit on the, this, on the little stage I've, on the little makeshift stage I've made for it. Um, okay, wow, that's, let's, let's, I gotta move my whole camera system back. Ugh. That, um, that takes up a lot of shelf space on your display, doesn't it? I mean, uh, where's my ruler? Let's see if I can, let's measure this. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yep, from the ground to all the way to the tips of those flags, that is a full 12 inches of height. And if we're going to do the depth of the figure too, like measuring from the tips of the flags at the top to the tip of the Gatling gun, that's um, it's also 12 inches deep. You need a cubic foot on your shelf space to display him like this. I mean, I suppose you could put smaller figures next to him and they'll be encompassed by the, by the flags. Like, like, this guy is big. He is huge. He's kind of difficult to display because of his big and hugeness. Although, I suppose it's not too hard to get people to stand next to him because it, at least with the depth of the flags, the, you know, the, the flags are fabric. They're real flags. kind of awesome really so he cuts a really really fine display even if he's just kind of so huge that uh that it's kind of but it, it would just kind of be hard to do this i mean don't get me wrong i'm glad NECA went the extra mile to make this thing look so awesome but gosh this thing is huge i can see why it originally retailed for 30 bucks Actually, I kind of feel like it should have been more expensive than that, because this thing just feels great. I mean, he's totally super articulated. The plastic he's made out of feels pretty strong and sturdy. His accessories are fantastic. And he has some play value with the swapping heads. So, this is just a really awesome toy. So, um, if you can still find this on the clearance shelves at your local Toys R Us, I would totally recommend picking him up too, because he's pretty, pretty freaking cool. Alright, this has been Wake Angel 2001, signing off.